We've significantly expanded our fixture mode with two new DMX fixture profiles and doubled the number of available layers. We've also added single layer transitions, allowing crossfading between two visuals on a single layer, a second effects generator, and a brand new mask engine. Let's begin with the DMX patch. Open the Preferences window of Media Master and select the DMX tab. Choose a DMX interface from the drop-down menu. This can be either a DMX capture card, an ArtNet input, or an MANet input. For this tutorial, we'll use ArtNet. Let's select a fixture profile. For this tutorial, we'll use the new Layer Extended 2.0. Now we can choose the amount of layers to use for our demo and click OK. Now click Auto Patch to address the layers. The new features of Layer 2.0 are Single Layer Transition, Ignore Alpha, the Second Effect Engine, Invert Color, New Behavior of Color Control, and Mask Engine. Let's start with the Single Layer Transition. Select a layer, define a visual, and begin playback. When selecting another visual, you'll see that there's no transition between the two visuals. By default, the transition is set to Cut with a timing of zero. Let's change that to crossfade and enter a transition time of five. Now, if we select another visual, you'll see that there's a crossfade between the two visuals. Let's take a look at Ignore Alpha. Ignore Alpha allows you to toggle the alpha channel from any visual on and off. I'll select a visual for layer one, and for layer two, I select a visual that contains an alpha channel. You can now toggle the alpha channel from that visual on and off from your lighting desk. In Media Master 6, you can now enjoy two effect engines. We've added an intensity fader on each effect engine as well. You can, of course, combine the two effect engines together. You can now control color inversion for each layer through DMX. The different modes are Invert All, Invert Only Red, Invert Only Green, or Invert Only Blue. We've also changed the behavior of the color control channel. The color control channels are now 16-bit, and you can remove or add any color from 0 to 200%. You now have control over tiling X and Y with two separate DMX channels. This allows you to modify the tiling from X and Y independently. You can now load a mask into each layer independently. This will help you to mask a specific part of your content or to have a cut and fill effect for each of your layers. Masks are stored in folder number 255. You can drop your own masks there as well. A mask file can be a PNG or JPEG. A mask file can be either color, black and white, or alpha based. Select your mask in the mask index. I have a visual running on layer one, and in layer two, I'll load a separate visual with a black and white mask applied. In the output window, you can now see that we have Layer 1 playing in the background and a masked Layer 2 playing on top of it. You can see in the layer preview that the black part of the mask is now transparent. The different mask modes are Grayscale, Invert Grayscale, if you have an Alpha Mask Alpha and Invert Alpha, and finally Color for Color Masks. The Alpha control gives you control of the opacity of the Alpha channel of the mask. For each mask, there is also an RGB control which allows you to fill in the black area with a specific color. Those colors can be sent from the desk within the three dedicated RGB colors. Let's look at the color mask. Select a color-based mask from the mask index and set the mode to color. By default, the black areas of the image will behave as a mask because the RGB controls are at zero. Adjust the color sliders to choose any color to act as the mask. The tolerance control defines how closely the colors need to match the sliders before it becomes transparent. You can move and size your mask. In the output window, notice that we are only changing the mask, leaving the content in place. You can scale your mask and use the edge control to smooth the edges.